Well, hello everyone and welcome to Between the Seams Volume 2. I thought I'd just quickly kick this one off with a, with a thank you to everyone who watched the first episode and for your kind comments and feedback. It has been a very busy couple of months for us since we put the first episode out at work, but of course we have been managing to get out and do a bit of our own fishing and taking the cameras with us where possible. So coming up in this episode, you can expect to see a rather interesting interview with our good friend Gio of Monkey Climber. We've spent a little bit of time in our syndicates, not as much as we would like to have done, but we've still made time where we can. Trist has been over to Sandhurst Lake on the Yateley Complex for a social with some old syndicate friends, and he's also been over to Walthamstow for a couple of day trips. But to kick this one off, back in July when the weather was a lot warmer than it is now, myself and Trist headed over to Raysbury South Lake to spend a weekend with our good friend Ben Stock for a social. We did treat it as a social, so it wasn't a dedicated filming trip, um, but we all managed to catch a few fish, and here's what happened. Hello, and welcome to Between the Seams Volume 2. We're kicking this one off with a little social session for our good mate Ben Stock. Je m'appelle Ben. Over at Raysby South Lake. As you can see, I've been lucky enough to catch the first couple of fish from, the, from a new lake last night. This one and a lovely common as well. We're here for two nights, so a fair bit of time ahead of us. A nice barbecue tonight. And yeah, have a good time. Hopefully catch a few of these. Come on lads, jump in. <laughs> Oh, it's bobbing around, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> you in, yeah? I ain't again, boys! Lost two in the same, same bloody bit of weed. But just managed to get the third one through it. There we go. <laughs> just about to start the barbecue and have a bit of lunch just before we go up and do a bit of float fishing. And yeah, we've not a lot of time at all. Like myself and Ben, another take. So as Lou briefly said, uh, we're here over at Raysbury, fishing on the South Lake. Um, having a little bit of a social get together as well as hoping to catch a few fish along the way. Um, so far we've achieved both parts of that. Um, I think we're on number five or six fish now. Good? Yeah mate. Fell down a tiny bit, thank you. You can feel the temperature raising as the sun starts to go over the top of us. It's I mean, we're looking at another 30 degree day today, so I think we're gonna have a bit of lunch, um, head off to the other end of the lake, and see if we can find a few fish to get them feeding on top. We reeled our, our main bottom rods in and, and all, all got our floater rods ready, went for a stroll, 
on sort of closer inspection and, and sort of starting to fish for them, it was soon apparent that they definitely weren't interested in a floater. So rather than spending all of our energy in 30 degrees heat, sweating and fishing for fish that just weren't interested in feeding, we just sort of came back here, chilled out, got rigs tied for tonight, got, got rods ready, bit of bait on the spots. So the barbecue's been put on now, I'm going to get these two rods plopped out, ready for the night and, uh, and go and enjoy some food, a couple of beers with a couple of mates for the evening. Definitely down that path, mate, isn't it? Now battery's gonna die now. Oh, oh. what's the cap? Now put it down. Dealing yeah. with novices. Uh -huh. The ting tings. The ting tings. They're on the way. They're. Alright. And them. Oh. Biggest one I've ever had out of the cell. Well happy with that. Yeah, well, well done, mate. Good angling. Yeah, boy. So that turned out to be a really enjoyable weekend. Spent catching up with some good old mates, enjoying the weather having a social and catching a few fish along the way as well. As you know, our angling tends to be overnighters, um, but on this next session, Tristan set himself aside a weekend to spend a couple of nights on his syndicate, and that one turned out to be lucky for him in more ways than one. Hello, so you join me back over my syndicate. Uh, same place as last time. Um, I haven't actually had a lot of time to fish it, to be quite honest with you. The last time I was over it was probably the last time I was filming for the last diary piece. But regardless of that, I'm over it now. Um, it's been about three or four weeks now. The last time I was here was, January, it was about July time. It's now middle of August. And um, you know, we finally got that breaking weather that we've all been waiting for, really. Um, it's been so hot the previous weeks leading up to this, the fish have been spawning, the lake's been shut, but now the temperature's dropped down to around about, I don't know, I'd say probably 18 to 20 degrees, so it's still quite warm, but nothing on the 30, 35 degrees that we were having on the weeks previous. It's now Saturday, got down here late last night, um, so finally, mate, finally found the time to actually try and string a couple of nights together. Um, just on dark, really, last night when I got here, and getting the rods to help just on time. Didn't have dinner till about midnight, and you know, woke up, woke up this morning. Nothing had happened, really. I mean, one of the favourable swims um, on this lake. It's not often free, but no one's fishing for the last few days because the temperature has dropped down, and it's the sort of end of the lake which is a lot shallower. It's very silty, lots of overhangs big chucks, so unless the fish are really in here, no one really wants to be in it. It's looking good for a bite, you know, it's really overcast today, um, a lot cooler as I say, but uh, yeah, I'm, I am confident for a bite, you know, it, it looks like it's gonna happen and I've just got to sort of sit on my hands and <laughs> see what does happen, to be honest.
finally got another double take, haven't I? <laughs> like buses, sitting there, watching the water. All of a sudden, middle rod, beep. Got that in fairly easily. As soon as I've netted it, beep. Left rod, <laughs> nah, proper buzzing, proper buzzing. Let's have a little look. One is a good one. There we go. Got down here last night, straight from work, and first thing this morning was rewarded with this. I've been gagging to go over here for a full day for ages. Majority of my fishing, as you know, is overnighters. So yeah, absolutely made up with this. And believe it or not, I've got one quite a bit bigger in another retainer. I'm gonna get this one back, have a look at that one. Lovely. Nice. Well done, well done, there we go. Number two of the morning. I'd like to think I've been a little bit unlucky with the size of fish so far. This has certainly made up for it. Just a record. A fish called Four Scale. A 37 pound and four ounces. Happy days. As an angler and of someone who's keen to use a camera, there's always a sort of bucket list, so to speak, of pictures that you really want to get. And for me, something I really, really wanted to get was, like I'm sure a lot of other people, was to get a kingfisher just on the end of my rods. And this morning, as I say, when I woke up, looked out, he was there, sitting on my right hand rod. I was like, oh man, got the camera, changed the lens over, and uh, he flew off. I was like, oh, right, sitting there patiently. I gave it probably about two hours just sitting there on my bed chair with, with my camera in my hand, just sitting there waiting. And it's, you know, time's just flowing by, and all of a sudden he just turned up again. And uh, lo and behold, I got it. I got the picture. I got, I got the photo that I've, I've wanted to get for such a long time. And um, it was a good one as well. I'm sure you've already seen it. But, but yeah, chuffed to get it. As I say, it might, might not mean a lot to a lot of people, but for me, that was one picture that I really, really wanted to get and have. So yeah, that's a tick. Tick there for me. And just like that, six o'clock on Monday morning, the last night passed with no fish. Sort of get about mid afternoon yesterday, um, the lake got really, really busy. Um, there was probably sort of seven or eight anglers on, which is pretty much full. The wind just ran, just span around completely and started blowing straight out of the bay and almost watched the fish move with it. But by the time I sort of acknowledged what was going on and, and then all the fish were moving out of the swim, all the other swims were taken and nowhere to move to. So I sort of just sat the night out, had some dinner, chilled out, and uh, I waited the morning to pack up really. So yeah, I've got to wait a little while to come back now. There's a rule in here about um, if you fish more than 48 hours, then you have to have pretty much a week off. So, no fishing down here this week. Um, we'll be next week and yeah, see if I can make it happen again. Very enjoyable session, buzzing to actually have a couple and it's nice to actually stay for a little bit longer as well. So on that note, I'm gonna get packed up, get off to work, and try and find my hay fever tablet. It is outrageous this morning, but there we go. So I guess that brings us up to what I've been up to. What the? I guess that brings us up to. Up to, up to, up to. <laughs> what have I been doing? Nothing. Blanking. I'm getting tufty. <gasps> anyway, I guess. <laughs> oh, blanking's not good. Does this to you. And I'm going to burn my crumpets in a minute. Can't be doing that. Can't be blanking and burning crumpets. Right. Right. So. So. I can't do it. Look at the glasses. So, I guess that brings us up to. Why do I keep saying up to, man? So I guess that, okay. Right, ready?
So I guess that brings us on to what I've been up to in my fishing since July. Um, I haven't really done an awful lot of fishing, to be honest. Um, I have been popping over the syndicate, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, but in all honesty with you, I have been struggling. Um, we all go through it. We've had, you know, there's a million different excuses that I could sit here and, uh, and use, but it's probably been a bit of a combination of a, a lack of time for one, um, not keeping an eye on the place and just sort of fishing very, very ad hoc, just getting down here when I, when I want to go fishing, I've grabbed the gear and I've got down here for an overnight. I haven't really put in any sort of time to get any, you know, get anything going on. I haven't really campaigned on here this year. So it's been a bit of fishing here and there for me since, um, since the start of summer. We'd been working some silly hours. We've been to various different countries this year in between and around being in the office filming for our first ever feature film, which is something very, very special that we've been working on behind the scenes, which unfortunately we can't include too much of, but there's probably some clips going over my voice now of what we've been up to in the various different countries we've been in this year. Um, so that's to come early part of next year. I did get over here one night after work with Tristan for a social on, on, this, on this syndicate. And uh, it was a well overdue social. We, we needed a bit of downtime, a bit of chill out time. We had a nice barbecue, sat there and sort of just had a bit of a, a calm down from the week previous when we were over in um, either Holland or France, can't remember now which one it was, but we was over in, uh, in a different country filming the week before the social and uh, it was just a much needed sort of get together, a couple of beers, some nice food on the barbecue and, uh, and Tris, the jammy git, managed to catch a couple of fish as well. Uh, no, hats off to him. Um, Caught a couple of nice 20 pounders on, on this overnighter that we did together. Uh, one of which was a fish that I recognised um, as a fish called Clover in here. They're not huge, but um, you know, they're, they're recognisable, nice characters. And, uh, and this one was a, a leathery old mirror that I caught myself last year. It's a rare visitor to the bank um, and a real, you know, real good effort to catch that one. Um, he braced that with a 20 pound common as well. So, Two 20 pounders on an overnighter during a social. Hats off to him. Good angling, mate. Um, yeah, that wasn't it though. The jammy git couldn't leave it alone, could he? <laughs> no, yeah, he managed to uh, get down the week after and did a did an overnighter with um, with his other half. And yeah, caught another caught, caught another nice um, little fully fully scaled mirror. Real nice fish. So um, yeah. He's been doing better on here than I have, but as I did mention previously, I have caught a few along the way, in, be in between and around the sort of, the non-scheduled fishing attempts on here. But yeah, I have caught a few, so uh, when I have done, I've been bringing the cameras down with me or I've, 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 had, I've had the cameras here, so here's what's been going on for me the last few months. Hello, you're joining me back down at my syndicate water tonight for a quick overnighter and I'm actually back in the same swim that you saw me in in the previous episode. I've had to wait a little bit longer tonight to get my rods out, hence why the light's fading really quickly. The swimmers have been on and they were out doing their thing for a bit longer than usual tonight, so obviously paying them a bit of respect, it's their late too. Um, I'm, I've held back from getting the rods out or, or doing anything um, in terms of casting out or anything just yet. So they're now all off the lake. I'm ready to get the rods out. I've just got to tie up a few fresh rigs, get some bait out, get stung by the mosquitoes at the same time, and, uh, and yeah, and get my head down for the night. Surprisingly, I haven't got a barbecue on the go tonight, which is quite rare for me, really. I do like a bit of a barbecue, even on an overnighter. But I've managed to prep some food at work before I came out, and uh, once the rods are out, I'm gonna tuck into that and get my head down for the night. Fingers crossed. Um, that sometime between 8 and 10 in the morning, like usually happens on here, um, that they turn up on me and I've really got my fingers crossed for a bigger one this session. Um, I've been a little bit unlucky with the, 
with the size of the fish, although there's nothing wrong with that at all and I'd love catching them whatever the weight. It would be really nice to show you one of the lake's gems um, that this place holds and they certainly are gems as well. So without further ado, as this light is fading rather rapidly now while I'm talking to the camera, I'm going to get my free rods out, get that grub down me and, uh, and get set for the morning. Well, good morning all. Not a lot to report from last night, apart from I definitely know the fish were down this end. They were, they were boshing out in between this swim, over the spot, and, and the next swim up. So I've definitely been here. I've had all the rods out, sweet, since I got here last night, with bait out, you know, really accurately, really happy with how it's all gone. I've got about an hour left, that's all I can do today. I'm going to leave this camera set up on the rods now. I'm going to finish off my coffee, start getting some kit away, and hopefully get a quick bite before I go back to work. There you go, this is the culprit of that absolutely melting take that I've had this morning on a quick overnighter. It's probably a low 20 pounder, so I'm really, really chuffed with this one. Yeah, he's picked me up a little bit, he's a bit of a wild one. So, uh, it's gonna get him back and get back off to work. He is an angry one. <laughs> Now I'm absolutely covered in water. <laughs> Overnight success. Right, well good afternoon. For this session you're joining me back down at my syndicate water and unlike any previous sessions I've done on here, I've actually got a bit of time put aside for this one. So I've got three full nights and three full days to see if I can catch a couple of nice autumn carp. So I got down here about three o'clock yesterday afternoon on a Sunday. Um, it's early October, so after finishing a few bits and pieces with the family yesterday morning, I quickly got all my gear packed up and ready loaded in the car to get down here for a uh, for sort of mid afternoon so I've got a good chance to see the lake to have a look for any fish um, but really to make sure that I got into these these two swims up up this end I say two swims I'm not fishing two swims I've got three rods out in one swim but I have been baiting two swims for the last three days so I've got options um, I don't need to move on to uh, onto the one next door I can get to it from here um, but it's a swim that I've been, that I have fished in the past. Um, I was fishing it last autumn after the other one got quite busy um, and did manage to keep a couple of really nice captures quiet as well. So um, yeah, one of them was a really nice, real dark mid 20 common um, and a real nice little mirror as well and a, and a couple of other ones and on the way. And another angler did turn up and she went directly opposite. Um, this spot that I'm fishing by the way is 
literally slap bang in the middle of the lake. It's near enough, without giving too much away, it's near enough the same wraps from each side, just at a slightly different angle because of where the swims sit. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was here, bivvied up, ready, doing respawning my reels and uh, yeah, out go three rods onto the spot and it sort of left me a little bit scratching my head really. Um, you know, I didn't know if it was sort of an unwritten rule, if you're here then you sort of leave that one or vice versa really. I mean, I know I certainly wouldn't go in here if someone was opposite, um, I know that for a fact. But anyway, so to, to my shock, um, these three rods went out, a bit of bait went out and then the, the, the guy just disappeared. So I don't know for whatever reason he's, he's had to leave the lake, but I don't know if he intended on fishing the night or if he was just baiting up, but that sort of tells me that someone might be coming back this week um, and if I want to fish that spot for the, the duration of this session um, I'm going to be moving around the other side of the lake so fortunately I did want to stay put in this swim for the duration I don't want to risk not being able to fish on that spot I have been baiting it and from past captures I just know that it's so so right for that for that swim right now on that spot so we're gonna have a quick coffee the kettle's just done so we're gonna have a quick coffee get all the stuff in the car get back round there and I'll catch up with you when I'm setting up over there. Just while packing up there, looks like it's been there for a little while. Let's get round there. Well, I'm round the other side of the lake. I'm all set up, ready to go. I've got the bivvy up. Uh, all went really well. Packed up really nice and quick, got round here. Um, I'm all ready to go. I'm now really hungry, so I'm gonna have some lunch. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is get everything ready for the night. I'm gonna get fresh rigs tied. I'm gonna get bait on the spot. And then tomorrow, um, as a more active sort of sort of hunting day, if you like, gonna be really active. Gonna be walking around a lot tomorrow with the rods. Um, day bites are very sort of hard to come by on here, from what I've heard from other members. I haven't really sort of experienced the daytime on here because I'm an over overnighter angler. So uh, having you know three days, including today, at my disposal to uh, to have a real good look and, and, and a go for them. Um, definitely not going to ignore that end of the lake because that's where I think they'll probably be spending most of the daytime. Well, that is me done for the night. I did go and have a look down in the bay. I think I saw one fish in the shallows, which is uh, the other side of the rope. So um, tomorrow's looking promising. Put a little bit of bait on about four spots in the end. So, it's, so I've got some options for tomorrow, basically. And yeah, I've come back to the swim. I've got all three rods out and I'm hopeful for the night. Hopefully, the next time you see me will be in the morning with a carp in my hands. To them. Right, well, good morning. It's half seven, and um, I've been sitting here since six o'clock this morning. Uh, the mist is starting to rise off the lake. The sun's starting to creep just over and, and light up the tops of the trees. All the, the floors dewy and wet and damp. The bivvies, you know, condensationed up. It was a really warm night, to be honest. to report on the fish front capture wise but I am happy to say that I'm in the right area they were crashing down here last night um, some real big boshes as well to be fair I've been up since six o'clock watching the water looking over my spots and, and, and down the bay and I haven't seen one this morning but I know that if they were here last night there's bait out there it's 
plenty of bait out there. Three rods out there. All I can do now really is, uh, is have a couple of cups of coffee this morning. Tristan's on his way. Um, I'm sure he'll be here soon, so I'm going to get one boiled up and ready and waiting for him. And yeah, I'm going to sit on my hands and uh, fingers crossed, we get the first one of the session this morning. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. See how today goes. Just going to get some bits together. And I'm just going to prep a little bit of bait. I'm going to, uh, going to make up some dust with my trusty little body crusher. And uh, I'm going to mix that with some, I've got some PVA friendly hemp, some baggable hemp, so some body crumb and a little bit of particle in some little mesh bags. It's going to be my, my sort of uh, my tactic for today if I see anything. I think it just the dust and the attraction from the broken boilies draws them down. I'm only going to be fishing in shallow water like a couple of feet, so that's all I'm going to need to pull them down. I don't need to bait the hell out of it. I'm just looking for a quick bite if they're even there. So it's warmed up a hell of a lot since this morning, and even though we've been for a look, I'm sure I'm sure that they'll be down there. Whether they're in numbers or not, I don't know, but we shall see. All three of them are absolutely clean as a whistle. Baffling. Quite a fair in there, you'd know about it, wouldn't you? After hours of searching down in the shallower end of the lake, even with the sun beating down, I didn't see any signs of the fish. I wanted to spot at least a couple in these areas before I got a rod out to fish for them. The hours spent searching passed quickly, so I made my way back to my swim to prepare the rods for the final night. I knew a blank could be on the cards, but had my fingers crossed that they may turn up the following morning. This was not the case, and I found myself packing up with my tail firmly between my legs and feeling a bit beaten up by the place that session. Blanking is a part of the journey and happens to the best of us. As they say, it wouldn't be called fishing if you caught every session. See you next time.